in relation to the picked tattoos, I have noticed something I have never heard mentioned before. The only difference I see between the picked tattoos, the Roman armor, and the later British royal armor, is armor. And this may be no different for the tattooed native tribes. The native tribes use oral history. There were no books to alter, therefore to change their narrative, reforming tattoos would be the only option. Let's begin. Who are the Pict? A member of an ancient people, inhabiting northern Scotland in Roman times. My clan Christi, a Pictish clan, is from the Isle of Man. We settled on the east coast of Scotland, a location later taken by the Chaldean monks. We now live beyond the wall, like the heathens coming south in the Game of Thrones. The origin of Pict is from late Latin, Picti, perhaps from Pict, painted, tattooed, from Pingir, to paint, or perhaps influenced by a local name. The name is obscure by design. Alternatively, it comes from Pext, meaning confidence, referring to those who oppose the Empire, meaning it is also cognate with Pest. In this context, relating to plague and destruction. relating to plague and destruction, which may have been used against the Pict, for a plague hit Sunderland in 684, wiping out most of the inhabitants, allowing St. Bede to rewrite history. St. Bede is moved in at seven years old, and he goes on to write Pict propaganda, translating Hebrew texts into Old English, more than likely working for the Chaldean monks. I believe it is Pict, Pext, Confidence, because nothing has made the Empire shit faster than a free man or woman. The free man is a plague to the Empire. In the Middle East, the free men were known as the sons of Belial, demonized by the word. Belial is a demon. A clan named Christi, meaning Sons of Christ, Sons of Christopher, or the Anointed Tribe, Anointed also meaning afflicted, probably meaning really pissed off. And I believe this is why we took the name in 200 AD, not that we are Sons of Christ, but because nothing has ever made the Empire shit faster. Don't forget, the Pict brought the Roman Empire to its knees, but were later assimilated via Germanic and Norse refugees, that more than likely contained sleeper cells. The sleeper cell 
may have been the castle, because the nobility never really took over the land or the people. They took over castles, like cowards, and over time, they took the names of the original nobility that lived there. They waited for a few generations, and through this act, through time and forgetfulness, they eventually became known as the nobility. They literally locked themselves in the tower. My clan migrated to the east coast of England, more than likely to fight off invading forces. The river waders connected to the blue men of the Minch, which I will get to shortly. I have a feeling that my tribe was a collective of people who had lost their families due to Roman invasion, who came together and stood their ground to protect the land and its people, opposing the empire, accordingly becoming known as the Sons of Christ. But the name may have also baited them. We may have created a snare for the wicked. In truth, I have found that Pict represents nothing, really. It is vague and obscure, and could easily refer to any ancient tribe from no particular region. My people's true name has been removed from the history books. If you think about it, all native tribes are Pict, Pext, meaning confident, as they are self-sufficient. Because they are self-sufficient, there is no need for the Empire to feed them, or, as seen in our current situation, not feed them. If you can forgive the phrase, they are not dependent on mother's teat. I believe after many years of research, that Pict is from Pictograph. The Pictish Stone. The Empire moving in. The Pictish Stone is a standing stone and are related to magic and sorcery from the Chaldean region. The Z symbol belongs to the Norse and Germanic Vikings, referring to the god of the storm, the wolf angel. But what does it mean? Other German names for the Wolf Angel include Wolf Sanker, Wolf Anker, which is the crescent shaped bar holding the hook. Wolf's Haken, the Wolf Hook, and Doppelhaken, Double Hook. Volodymyr Vladimir. French names include Hemicon, fish hook, Hemicon de Loup, fish hook for wolves, and fur a loop, wolf iron, as well as crampon, iron hook. The symbol may be an anchor, 
A modern representation would be the flag, claiming the region, hook, line, and sinker. The stylized version of the Z-shaped wolf angle developed into a popular medieval symbol in Germany that was associated with magical powers. Therefore, the standing stone with a magical symbol is a magical standing stone, and was believed to have the ability to ward off wolves. The wolves are identified as the nobility, and in medieval Britain, the royalty and the nobility were accused of being werewolves, the wolves in sheep's clothing, possibly referring to the fact that they were not who they were purported to be. Purported, appearing or stating to be true, though not necessarily so, alleged, The wolf symbol appears on early medieval banners and town seals in Germany, particularly in forested regions where wolves were present in large numbers, for example as early as 1299. The symbol can be found on seals relating to the lords of the German Black Forest town, Wolfach and their wolf angel banner became the municipal coat of arms for the town. The symbol can also be found in medieval stonework. The wolf angel, which is similar to saying the wolf in sheep's clothing. The Wolf Angel Z symbol bears a visual resemblance to the Proto-Germanic I was rune, historically part of the runic alphabet. The wolf's angel is sometimes referred to as a runic symbol. The symbol is Ni, N and I. In the Ukraine, the symbol is claimed to mean national idea, where the symbol is composed of N and the letter I, Ni. In Britain, we are given a national insurance number referred to as N.I. In the Chaldean region, Sumerian, Ni, Melam, Fear, a tattoo-like substance. It is almost as if we are being labelled as a destructive species. English meaning, into a destructive species. Don't forget, the land of Ur, the land of the wolf, the wolf angel, and the wolf's hook. The standing stones and the magic wood, derived from symbols, which would be the symbolic tattoos. Because not only are these symbols very strange, they resonate with an unnatural energy. The evolution of the tattoo. For the state of Rome to continue, Augustus knew he had to take the Germanic region 
So we know that the Germanic region was taken over by Roman rulers. It doesn't make sense to arm an assimilated group, so how would you get those people to wear pictographic symbolism without having to provide armor? The Fenris Wolf and the Anzu Bird are synonymous. This would be the beast, depicted on Pictish tattoos and stones. The city of Ur can also mean wolf, and the stinger of Scorpio is the wolf's hook. But, 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 this beast is also on the armor of the invading Romans who assimilated that region. Here you see the armor of Julius Caesar. The Romans are known to have altered these stone carvings. So are these stone carvings actually picked, or do they indeed move north? The modern soldiers are draped in pictographic symbolism, especially a hundred years ago in the Germanic region. For example, the oak leaves represented an offering to Zeus. In the older ocular cult, the Greek oracles never wrote on paper, they wrote on leaves, and this is why a page is also known as a leaf. The oak leaf represents an offering to Zeus, for the mighty oak can withstand a thunderbolt. Although this symbol appears to be a symbol of protection, it is in fact the opposite. The offering to Zeus is the soldier. Zeus like an os. Wolf Zeus. The offering to Zeus is the soldier, and should he meet his end while wearing these symbols, then the person becomes an offering to the gods, which includes the logos, more than likely the logos you wear. Whether or not this be true doesn't really matter, they still believe it and practice it, and I'm quite sure, due to compartmentalization, together with the backstabbing, the plague, and natural disaster, resulting in the loss of the authors and wisdom keepers, that they have lost their insight as to why they do what they do. If there is a demon of the outer darkness, then by definition it is on neither side, meaning everyone is expendable. The real demons we need to deal with are men, working for it. Jin, those with fire in their eyes. Jin, meaning to conceal, referring to liars on the public stage. Oh yes, tattoos. The Scythians already wore tattoos, and those moving north were expert engravers and artisans. The armor is not used, but the iconography is. If in doubt, I refer you back to the armor of Julius Caesar, with Shukwamuna and Shumalea, the Mesopotamian royal gods, and the tree of life between them. This is not the world tree. It is the symbol of chaos and assimilation. If you have seen Loki the series, where a new Loki is created, in turn creating a branch off in time, then you will be able to understand this. Each time a region is assimilated, it creates a new branch of time. For example, Sumerian, Akkadian, Elamite, etc. etc. evolving into Hebrew. It is an offshoot of the original stem casting the seed of doubt, which would be the acorn, 
the seed of the oak tree, the symbol of Zu in Samaria, the city of Ur, meaning the city of the wolf, the symbol of Zeus in Greece and Rome, Zeus Lycanos, wolf Zeus, the symbol of Odin, Zeu, in High German, in Germania, Odin Tyre, Othila, and the Fenris Wolf, who bound the Fenris Wolf, therefore the Wolf Angel of Odin, and the recent Zooism, tying all of the aforementioned together, is a modern pagan new religious movement based on Sumerian religion. Zooism in Iceland 2013 is a modern pagan new religious movement based on the Sumerian religion. Regardless of my opinion, the narrative moves north. The Ashipu bankers of ancient Samaria did the very same thing that is seen in Zooism. In late 2015, the board of directors of the Zooist Church of Iceland was hijacked by people who were originally unrelated to the movement. In ancient Samaria, the Ashipu priest infiltrated the kingship. The exorcism priest was above, I should say behind, meaning Davos, from, of, post, behind, religion. Similar to the Rothschilds, the Ashipu became more powerful than the king himself, meaning the bankers infiltrated the kingship, probably in the same manner, greed and wealth, of course, at a price. They ruled from behind the throne of glory, which I think you'll agree is very similar to Zooism. Zoo, Zoo, Zoo. Or the earlier theosophical movement, which met a similar end. In Britain, there is evidence of this assimilation on my doorstep. Saint Bede attempted to align the Pict with the Scythians. This is now known as propaganda. Although there is a connection, the Scythians believed that the land of the gods was to the west, and they are known to have delivered tribute to our shores, which reminds me of the opening scene for American gods. Saint Bede reveals a connection between Hebrew, Norse, and Old English, which are derived from runes, meaning they are a form of witchcraft, pharmakia. He also did a copy in Frankish. It would appear that he was preparing the land. In the same way we get the French Polynesian tattoos, I believe we get the picked tattoos in the very same fashion brought in by refugees. Brought in by the Frankish nobility, who were actually Norse, from the Sieg River. Yes, that Sieg. All in all, it's just another brick in the wall. I see this narrative moving north from the deep of ancient Sumerian demonic lore. The ancient Anunnaki demons wore tattoos with dark symbolic magic attached to them. And this is where the symbols used in modern language are rooted. Babylon was demonized, more than likely because the actions of the Ishibu were brought to light. But then again, the rich reigned for 1000 years, so it may be part of the plan. From destruction comes creation, so they say. They also say power is temporary, and they understand the inevitability of gradualness, working over time. 
by painting the people with the tattoos, we can clearly see that they were being demonized. And through the iconography, we can see that the only difference is armor. In my personal life, I do not like wearing logos. I am pained by reading and writing. And something deep within me says, never get a tattoo. Regardless of what has been fed to me by the history and mythology books, I listen to my inner voice, as should you.